Welcome to Unapologetically Woman. We're celebrating phenomenal women all across Kentucky who make no apologies for their perspectives or the impacts that they're making in the community. Today, we're celebrating Martina Barksdale. Martina is the co-founder of Soul Feast Week. She's a poet, a foodie, the producer and host of Everyday Kentucky on WKYT, Unapologetically Woman, Martina Barksdale, that's you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> so from Tate's Creek cheerleading to WKYT, yes. tell us about it. I mean, I've had a very long journey. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of full circle because mm -hmm. um, when I left high school, I, I swore I was never coming back to Lexington. Um, but, you know, God had other plans. So I went to um, school and I studied at the New York Conservatory for Dramatic Arts. Uh, graduated, uh, majored in acting and production in film and television. I took a hosting elective during that. And so I kind of fell in, they were like, you should pursue hosting. Um, so I ended up applying to the NBC hosting workshop in like 2016, 2015. Did that, applied for a hosting job in New York, was freelancing, doing hosting and acting. Uh, How exciting was that? No, it was. It was amazing. I miss New York all the time, but you know, it would take a lot for me to move back. <laughs> uh, then coming here, worked for the Cincinnati Reds for a little bit. Tell me about that. Um, I was a game day host and correspondent. Uh -huh. so I was that person at the games interviewing the players. On the field, that was you? Yeah, field and in the stands. So we would do like, you know, the games like you can win. I don't know, Budweiser or whatever, and mm -hmm. I did things like that and some of the advertisements for that. And then I ended up getting a full-time hosting job in Jackson, Mississippi, and I was there for a year over their lifestyle programming. Um, our sister station, WKYT, had an opening. I wanted to move closer to home, and mm -hmm. so now I'm here. <laughs> and I am so glad that you were here. Um, nobody just shows up. And so, because um, a lot of times we look at people and we're like, oh, you know, she just boomed and she did that. Mm -hmm. But that's not how that worked. Not at all. Not at all. You had a long journey ahead. I had a very, very long journey. <laughs> so talk to me about some of the challenges that you faced um, while you were finding finding your way right so uh, the biggest challenge was me moving back to Lexington because it wasn't a choice right it's different mm -hmm. when you want to move and it's a choice um, unfortunately at the end of 2017 beginning of 2018 um, I got sick so I was in the hospital for about three to four weeks um, I was diagnosed with uh, non-epileptic seizures as well as major depressive disorder and anxiety so really over the past few years like I've been rebuilding myself mm -hmm. and really re-emerging myself back into the Lexington community and thankfully you know I was born and raised mm -hmm. here they've accepted me with open arms but um, and then just being a black woman and all the challenges that brings I've heard a lot of no's um, still get a lot of no's still have to really fight to be in the room and um, not only have a seat at the table but create my own table um, and that's why I founded the sit-in and I, I wasn't able to get like full-time hosting work yet so I was like well, you know, I'm going to create something and highlight people in the community and, you know, merge it with my passion of love of food. And ever since then, it's just kind of snowballed. <laughs> so one of the things that I would think that have been really would be real helpful for you mm -hmm. is you have such a supportive family. Yes. Now, I'm not going to mention that you're a twin because I do remember when um, you used to get beat up on when you were a little right, girl. Right. I remember that. <laughs> you, you've known you know so long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my, my family and friends are so supportive. I'm surrounded with so much love and support. Um, my mom um, is a big, my, one of my biggest cheerleaders, as well as my brothers, Marcellus and Darius. And then I just have a, uh, I really try to pour into my relationships because um, I think it's important to be there for others as well as others be there for me. So without, like I said, people in the community, especially women in the community, mm -hmm. um, it's great to see that Lexington is is very supportive of each other. And so we, you haven't mentioned your dad yet, but we're gonna go ahead yes. and mention, we're yes. gonna mention him. You lost him when you were very young. Yeah, so my dad passed away to pancreatic cancer um, about a month before me and my twin brother's 13th birthday. And like, as you know, and anybody that knows Val Barksdale, mm -hmm. um, he was just phenomenal and so, some of the lessons that he taught me when I was younger, like they still ring 
true today and he was a big motivator I never you wouldn't even know he was sick when he was sick he was always smiling and welcoming to people mm -hmm. um, really pouring into others it helped fill him up mm -hmm. and that's something that I really try to take um, in my everyday life. Do you hear him in your ears sometimes? Go. Yeah. Because he was not a quitter. Oh, not He at all. was not a quitter. Sometimes I'm like praying like, okay, God. And then like sometimes <laughs> I hear my dad like, Tina, come on, you got this. Martina Nicole, you can do this. So, uh oh, not know. Nicole. <laughs> you know, not the, when they say the first and middle name, you know, <laughs> no parents mean business. Um, but yeah, I just, I know he's with me in a mm. lot of what I do. And um, sometimes it's like I do need to take I'm glad you asked me that question because sometimes I do need to take a step back and think about his impact and thing like and everything like that because you know grieving is it's you ne it never stops right it's so ongoing it's like, yeah some some years are better than others some days are better than others and so um, you know he he's made me who I am today even even though he's not physically here, I know I feel his spirit. Mm, he got you going. I can t I can tell you that because sure. I I know him and I know that he was a motivator and he was going to push you to be the very best that you could be. Right. Sometimes push me too past <laughs> far past my limits, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I know he knew I could do more and achieve more, and I try to take that with me. And you're doing that. Tell me about tell me about your work with Soul Feast Week. So uh, Soul Feast was founded by my twin brother and I. Like I said, my love of food. Uh, one of the things at the height of the uh, 2020 pandemic, uh, I started this challenge, hashtag 19 days of black biz, where in June, uh, leading up to Juneteenth, I supported a different black owned business. Um, and it got media attention and I, I wasn't expecting it, it's just some challenge I did on social media. I saw how specifically, uh, their small businesses were getting impacted, but specifically black businesses that were my clients that I were working with, they weren't qualifying for PPP loans and they were having to shut down. I was like, so what can I do about that? And so we, first it started just as a black restaurant week, but then when we were like, no, we want to really focus on black farming and agriculture and how we can pour back into that. So um, last year was year one. We're gearing up for year two. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be bigger, structured a little bit differently, um, but that's my most proudest accomplishment is Soul Feast. That, and that's the foodie in you because your eyes are sparkling. Oh my gosh, I love food. <laughs> like, wait a minute, she's talking about something that's really ex impactful for her. Yeah, so it's like, I, I'm kind of skipping over my journey, but my love of food came from serving and bartending and really working in the industry in New York City because as an, as an actress and a host, it's like, Unless you had that full time gig, you got still got to put food, food on the table. Um, and so I've developed a love for culinary and crafting beverages. And so um, to be able to merge like community and supporting black owned business with that, as well as agriculture in a way for to bring the city together um, is, is why is that important for you? Um, it's important to me because I understand the challenges that people go through and I understand our history. And um, actually my grandfather, James R. Mapp, was a huge civil rights leader um, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He fought one of the longest uh, lawsuits in history to integrate schools. And um, he's one of my heroes. Back of his house was bomb. Um, my aunts were like some of the first to be integrated in schools. And so I've always had that activism bug, um, not only with him, just within my family. A lot of my family are the first to do it. Mm -hmm. And I want it to get to a point where it's not shocking to be the first, you know? It's important. Um, we have stories to tell. We, it's important that we are represented um, in a positive light. And so working in media, like, I feel like that's a responsibility of mine that I take very, very seriously. So. Well, and people look up to you. Oh, really? Yes, <laughs> people. Nice yes, Mar <laughs> Martina Barksdale. I'm like, yes, I know her. You know, when I heard you were coming, I was like, yes, I know yeah. Martina. That makes me feel so good because this is one of my first community like awards or recognition and um, I was talking to my friend about it the other day and he was like, you feel like it's long overdue? I was like, no, not at all. Like. Think about me, I've, I've just been doing the work for five years. There are mm. people that have been putting their blood, sweat, and tears that have came before me that I'd always want to pay homage to and recognize. So uh, 
to really hear that I like if you are looking out for me that makes me feel good because it's not about me it's about we you know uh, it's about we and mm -hmm. it's also about once you get there mm -hmm. and while you're getting there helping bring somebody else along and I like that that's one of the things that you do oh a hundred percent if there's ever an opportunity on the table I know somebody for it and mm -hmm. that's I think that's what's helped elevate me and help build like it's like Issa Rae would say like network across it's like not everyone is always at the top right but that's not to say that they won't get there and I just believe in people so anytime that I can help elevate us I'm gonna mm -hmm. do it well and sometimes the top is relative right mm -hmm. I think it's about different places not about uh, the semantics of if you're on the top or the bottom because sometimes you can be on the top here mm -hmm. and be in a diff in a different place but it doesn't mean that you're on the bottom right right you know and yet yeah, like you said top and success are all relative like what I find successful for me is like being able to do what that. do you it, find um what makes you successful what makes me successful it's hard to answer because i'm not where i want to be but i'm much further than what i used to be um success for me is being able to be content in where you're at and being able to push and overcome because Life is a journey. Growth is not linear. So, you know, I might be feeling on top of the world one day and then the next day I'm not. Right. And it's not to devalue myself or that I mean any less, but it's just um, to really appreciate where you're at in the moment, because where you're at right now is where you're supposed to be. But you're not going to be there forever. Well, they say life is made up of a lot of little moments. Yes, yes. Not the long days, the moments. Because you don't have bad days, you have bad moments. And that's something that I continuously try to remind myself. Because it is hard. Like, it is hard. Um, you know, I constantly am dealing with some anxiety and depression. I know it's sometimes hard for people to see, but I've spent a lot of hours and a lot of work and a lot of <laughs> medical help um, in order to do that. Uh, but I just want to make sure, you know, others have the accessibility to um, better who they are. For young girls that are going to be watching this show mm -hmm. and looking at you and they see you on TV and that's where they want to be because you know you can't just get there right. and it happens. What kind of advice would you give them for perseverance? For per perseverance, be okay with rejection. You're going to get a lot of no's. Yeah, sometimes it might get you down, but you just got to keep pushing the pavement. Even when you feel like no, even when you're having 20 views or two likes or um, no, you feel like people aren't listening to you. Keep, stay strong in what you believe. Keep focused because like you have the vision, no one else. And sometimes it takes a while for people to get on board, but they'll eventually get on board. It was so exciting to have you here today. Yeah, I'm so glad. I was like, hopefully I didn't talk too much, but you were asking me such great questions. I was like, well, I haven't been, I'm always I was other... pretending. I was pretending to be you <laughs> sitting it. over here I'm being a little inferior. I'm usually on the other side, so it's just like, it, it felt good to be, you know, interviewed, so I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. You heard it from Martina Barksdale. Be willing to accept no. But don't let that stop you. Keep pushing forward and keep moving forward with your vision. Continue to join us as we celebrate other unapologetically women, just like Martina Barksdale, who are making impacts in their communities. I'll see you next time.